Hello everybody, welcome to Tooth and Claw TV. We've got a pretty special episode for you guys. We're hunting right here in Central Kentucky and we're on a bobcat stand. I'm behind the camera and I'm also on the gun. We'll see if I can't make it happen. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, I was just fixing to give it up. I'd actually just turned the camera off and this cat just come out. Yes! Yes! That is awesome. I actually literally <clears throat> heard something behind me and turned around looking for some deer running off. And I just said, well, I'm done hunting. I'm flipping the, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the camera off and and get out of here and I turned it off and looked up and seen something right there on the edge I said man that sure looks like it could be a cat and sure enough it was a little hectic because I'm filming myself so let's go get this thing oh yeah right there it is sir bobcat down baby awesome look at that thing Man, she's pretty. Female. Got a lot of back spots or kind of orangish color. A lot of these cats around here, around this area, are kind of this little orangish cast. But uh, man, she's got some absolutely beautiful belly spots. And they're just, man, they're just such cool animals. Look at that. Beautiful. Hey folks, my name is Gabe Jenkins. I'm our Deer and Elk Program Coordinator for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Today we're talking predator management and specifically bobcats. In Kentucky, we know bobcats can and will take deer. And sometimes, in some cases, we, they can take adult deer and sometimes they'll take fawns. We realize that it, it does happen. We don't think it happens a lot. And the main thing we want to tell our hunters is that, hey, if you want to try bobcat hunting, please go for it, try it. They are a concern when you think about whitetail populations and whitetail management. And uh, specifically in the, in the spring is when we know that they can be a damper on our fawns. So when you think, you know, getting out in the late winter and try bobcat hunting would be good. Well, here it is. First bobcat of the season. I actually didn't kill a bobcat last year. So it's first bobcat in two years. So pretty pumped to get her. Man, she's a pretty thing. Coming here to sit up on this place. Uh, this actually is a piece of property. The guy that owns is a good friend of mine. He's a big deer hunter. He's a really good deer hunter. And he's been seeing several bobcats. Been seeing some coyotes and the season's kind of winding down. So he gave me the go ahead and come in here. I come here and start out with the Eastern Cottontail Distress here on the Fox Pro Shockwave. Run it for about six minutes and decided to switch to D DSG Cottontail. And probably run it for another four or five minutes and actually had some deer run off behind me. Getting late, I'm filming myself and uh, I was just ready to get out of here. I'd actually turn the camera off and heck, as soon as I turned it off, looked up, here's this cat sit, sitting here on the edge of the woods. Get it turned on, finally find her and uh, had to move the gun and everything. As soon as I started to do that, she actually seen me, but it was too late. I had her in the crosshairs, put a good shot on her, hit her just perfect. First bobcat of the season.
To say I was excited to connect on that bobcat would be an understatement. Bobcats are my favorite predator to call in. And it's been a while since I've been able to put my hands on one. We didn't, I didn't get to kill one last year. So when I saw that bobcat sitting over on the, on the edge, I got pretty tore up. It was pretty special. I was on the gun and running the camera, so I was hunting solo. And to connect on that bobcat and that type of situation made it even more special. Thanks for joining us on Tooth & Claw TV.